Welcome back, you guys, to Duckman Cycles VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and this is... The McQueen. So you went to look at your first Volkswagen and you're interested in buying one and you don't know what to look for. You got that vehicle sitting around the corner that you've had your eyes on for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Find out what he's asking for it. And you don't know exactly what to look for, so... Right here behind us, we got the brand new to me Super Beetle, which is a 1972 that showed up at my doorstep last week from a friend of mine. So we're going to have a look around this car and see if it's one that I would be interested in buying should I have found this myself in somebody's yard. So anyways, before we roll on to anything else, licky likey, comment, subscribe, and here comes that intro. Okay, well the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 20 foot look that I told you about, or even the 50 foot look, where you wanna look at the car from some distance. You wanna to try to do it from both sides if you can. You wanna get a good look at the overall profile of the car. You're looking for like dents in the roof or other oddball things, and yeah, right here we got a dent. It's kind of a big one. Somebody probably put something on the roof at some point. It's actually a little bit rippled over here too, so this is gonna need a little bit of work to straighten out. But those are the kind of things you're looking for, just any oddities, anything that looks a little weird. Windshield area looks good. The hood looks good. In fact, the front of the hood here doesn't look like it's been flattened or hit at all. Either it's been a replacement hood or it's never been crashed. And that would be a really good thing. Is you want to see if the trim is intact. Look for trim, look for door handles, look for the rubber seals. All the stuff that you think should be on the car. Look for hubcaps or the missing ones that we see on here right now. Look at the tail lights, the headlights, and make sure the car looks complete. In this case, this one looks pretty good. So we're going to walk up to it and let's get a little bit closer. Okay, so we're now approaching this car. And the closer we get to, we start to notice some problems. So what's the first thing we see right over here in the back? Rust. Looks like we're looking at a rust hole. Now this is a car that has crescent vents on it. This is a crescent vent. Earlier Beetles do not have those. Look at that, it's actually crumbling apart. Yeah. I put my finger in the hole. <laughs> so it's going to need a new crescent vent. This area on most later Beetles is actually a very common area for rust. The reason why is this area is filled up with foam. And the foam that goes in that area can catch water, especially if it's ever gotten compromised and got a hole in it. The water will get into there and it'll soak the whole inside area. So what happens is the rust will come through the panels from the inside. So this is probably one of the first things that we're gonna notice on the car right there as we're walking around it. So yeah, you do wanna look in those areas, both sides of course. This side of the car, when I found this car, it was sitting up against uh, the guy's house. So this side sees a lot less rain, a lot less moisture, so the crescent vent area obviously isn't as rusted. It might be on the inside, but we can't see it over here. There's only one little hole over here. As we dig around in this, we might find it's worse, or maybe it's uh, no worse than what you see. But going around the car once again, oh, we look like we got a door that's dented in. The guy that I got this car from said uh, somebody ran into it. It uh, was parked at the time. Somebody just didn't know how to drive and just kind of bumped into it as they were pulling out of a parking lot. So the door might be able to be fixed. But if not, then we're going to replace the door. But obviously it's uh, pretty, pretty bad. Go ahead and pull it open. See if it opens up. It does open. That's a good thing. Because that was uh, something that was getting a little jammed up on it earlier. We're going to talk about that in a second. But it was something that was getting jammed up earlier. And I was having some issues getting it open. So we're not going to close it all the way. But we'll come back to that. As we continue to walk around this car, we notice there's not a single hubcap on it anywhere. But it does have both turn signals in the front. It does have both headlights, and it does have bumpers, both front and rear. The tires are also on there, and they're holding air. That's because I put air in them. But if you look at them real closely, we got dry rot. And it's some pretty severe dry rot on every one of the tires. I don't know what the tire date is on this, but uh, according to the owner, this thing has been sitting around about 30 years. He uh, attempted to repair the brakes on it, trying to get it ready to put it on the road, but didn't know what he was doing. So that's about as far as he got, and then ended up just sitting for a very, very long time next to his house, this side facing out. You want to try to get a good look at your wheels and tires. Do all of your wheels match? Are they stock or aftermarket? What kind of condition are they in? These are chrome wheels. Don't let anybody make you think that the chrome wheels were stock on a Beetle. They might be stock looking rims, but they are not stock. These have been replaced at some point. Do they have hubcaps? Obviously, these don't. <laughs> what kind of shape and condition are the tires in? 
In this case, they're looking pretty dry rotted, but even if they look pretty good and the owner is trying to convince you that the tires have been replaced recently, look for the date code on the tire and Google it if you're not certain what it is and find out just exactly how old those tires are. The car may have been sitting six, seven, eight years. Tires might look good, but they're probably reaching the end of their lifespan if they're about that old. So those are a few things you need to look for. If the hubcaps are off in this case, you want to look at the axle nut, make sure it's installed. This one is, but the pin that goes through it isn't here. So you don't want to certainly drive this thing without that because, well, the entire wheel and hub might come flying off of this car. <laughs> also check up front and look at the dust covers. Are they installed or are the bearings hanging out? Are the things complete with lug nuts? Do you have them all? Are the wheels rusted through? I mean, these are pretty rusty, but they're not rusted through. But those are things you do need to look for as far as wheels are concerned. So yeah, we got a little bit of rust down there in the bottom that definitely needs to be addressed. Obviously, the running board is also long gone. There are little pieces of it still remaining. This right here is a piece of running board. It looks like that fender also is a little worse for wear on the bottom. Once again, these are things you need to look for on these things. We're gonna start following around the windows, looking at the rubber seals. This is the rubber seal, go around. It looks like we got a little rust in this area. I can almost guarantee there's either a rusty spot here or there's a hole. And that might be where the water got into on the bottom. Over here on the crescent vent, water definitely got in there and went to the bottom. But it also looks like there might be a little pinhole right in here. So that's something that uh, needs to be addressed. So this window is going to have to come out and I'm going to have to do some welding on the rear window area. Now, of course, for a guy like me, not such a big deal. Coming around this way, that tail light obviously needs to be replaced. It's uh, kind of cracked, busted, oh. just dry rotten. But it looks like it's complete. Even the screws, which are kind of hard to get, are still there. I'm glad for that. That's good. And the metal tail light itself uh, got some rust. Well, it's completely rusted. Oh, yeah, through. the bottom of it's rusted through. So it's either going to need a repair or a replacement. The whole bottom is for a guy like me being the duck man, well, I might be able to repair it. How's this tail light look to you? better it looks like it's better yeah. and once again this is the one that was uh, up against the guy's house where the car was parked at so this side of the car looks like it's got a lot less rust damage a lot less rust damage you want to look in other problem areas such as up under the fenders up underneath there you see a little bit of light coming through there's obviously a rust hole under there mm -hmm. follow up and around this way we're looking for more rust holes sometimes there's one up on the top you see, it looks like we got some uh, undercoating is drooping off, but it doesn't look like it's from rust. Coming down this way, checking down that side, looking for more rust. And actually, it looks like things are pretty good down there. The lower part of this quarter does have some rust holes also, so it does need to have a little bit of uh, problems addressed there. This side does have a running board that's still surviving. It's still attached to the vehicle. Not in good shape. Ooh. It's going to need to be replaced, but it's still there. <laughs> Going to check up underneath the fender again. Lower quarter area up front, right there. Typical place for a rust hole to form. And this, this car is no different. Um, we're going to have you open that door now, and we're going to show what happens when that spot rusts out. Open the door, not that much. It's just about so it's almost closed. And go ahead and lift up on that door. And see how the entire hinge is actually pulling out of it. It doesn't look like the quarter's moving so much there, but the hinge screws are definitely not screwed into anything anymore. So the inside, wherever it screws into there, the captive nuts that are on the backside are probably rusted or gone. So I would expect that to be a problem. Now open up the door all the way and lift up on it again. Okay, now you can see that quarter is moving. So it's definitely broken from the inside on the heater channel. Let's walk around the other side here. And here's what it looks like from the other side. It looks like somebody covered it. They put a piece of metal over it, trying to hide the rust. Go ahead and lift up on it again. You see how the whole piece is moving? Not supposed to do that. <laughs> so we're definitely gonna have to address that. Looks like also along here, there's a door sill. This is not stock. This is not factory. In fact, it looks like somebody might have made it out of some metal had it bent. I can almost guarantee you that the heater channel underneath that's rusted. These are things you need to consider. If you find an area like this that's covered, automatically assume it's rusted. Somebody has done something to either hide it or the fact that they've tried to put a cover on it like this could trap water and could cause it to be rusted. So that should affect your price on how much you'd want to pay for this vehicle. Okay, we got this open real quick, so we're going to look at the inside door panel. And it looks like it's, it's pretty bad. 
this is one I wouldn't try to salvage. Some people might say otherwise, but I don't care about originality when it comes to this stuff, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But we are gonna look in the bottom of the door, and I'm not seeing any light coming through over there, but I did see some pinholes in the corners, especially up in the front area. Oh, yeah. And this door being as dented as it is, I might just choose to replace the door. So again, that needs to affect your price. Piece of the trim is also missing. With that piece missing, you can automatically say that all the trim is missing because it's gonna be hard to find another piece that's gonna look exactly the same as the others just based on how they've aged. So if you wanted to keep them original, you wanted to make it look patinaed properly, it's gonna be a little hard to find that same original piece. So automatically assume you're gonna have to replace all the trim if that matters to you. It's also a piece of trim that runs down the front hood. It's missing too. You can see the line in the paint from where it used to be. But the hood handle is there. That's good. And looking around here, looking at the lower window seal, I'm not seeing any rust. Well, you know what? I see a little bit of rust bleeding through over here. There might be a little bit of rust under that corner. Very common. There's two little weep holes that are in these corners here. The water that's allowed to escape through the weep holes actually drips down into the body and causes these sections down here to rot out. So once again, we need to have a look inside underneath these fenders. Look up under here. You see we got another rust hole up in the front quarter that's gonna to need to be addressed. I'm gonna go up and over the top and look, see if there's anything else. I'm seeing light coming through. Yep, we got some rust holes up here in the fender. Going down this way. Quarter looks pretty good. I don't see any crash damage, that's really good. And down there at the bottom, you see a bunch of pinholes in the front fender too, so that will need to be repaired or replaced. I think I can fix these fenders. I don't think that's too big of a deal, but that's what we're looking at under there. Now go ahead and pop this passenger side door open. Let's see what we got. All right, looks like we got a door card in there. This is just as bad a shape as it was on the other side. <laughs> Glove box is hanging open. There's the hood release. Yep, there it is. We do have a door handle level. Go ahead and lift up on that door and let's see what this, this does over here. That one's moving also, but not nearly as bad as the other side, but it's still going to need a repair. It also looks like somebody covered it with a whole bunch of trim trying to hide the rust. So all this is going to have to come out and all be repaired. All right, we're getting to the inside area now. Now this car has no battery in it. So what you need to automatically assume is it doesn't run. It's just, it, the car doesn't run. If you ever buy a car like this and it has no battery in it and nobody's gonna show you how it starts, assume that it doesn't run and it has a bad engine and let that affect your price. Don't let the owner ever tell you that it runs just fine or ran when parked or any, any of that other BS. <laughs> if you didn't see it running, then the car does not run and that's all there is to it. This car, once again, no battery. I did not see it run, so that's just the way it's gonna be. Check the condition of the bumpers. These bumpers are looking pretty rough. Uh, the rust doesn't look too bad. I can probably pound out most of the dents that you see in it, but there is supposed to be a rubber strip that runs along the front of these. If you're going to look at an earlier Beetle that has towel racks over the top of it, make sure they're complete for your particular year of vehicle. This rear bumper looks pretty rusty, pretty beat up. Most of the rust I think I can uh, scuff off of it, and again, the dents I think I can knock out of it, so this bumper is probably recoverable. You see that rubber strip? There's some of the remains of it. A little piece on either end. <laughs> Down underneath the front bumper area is the Super Beetle grill. And this was used for the optional air conditioners. And it looks like it's a little dented and warped. It's a little beat up. Hit from uh, road debris and other things laying around, I'm sure. Maybe when they pushed it around the yard, they hit a tree stump. So that's gonna need a little bit of work, but it looks like it's not overall mangled, and it's certainly not rusted out. Does it have a mirror? Is it original to the car? Is your antenna in any good shape? Does it have windshield wipers? Maybe you're not too concerned about it if you're gonna be restoring an old car, but you wanna make sure you at least have some of the wiper parts and that the little stubs that the wipers are attached to aren't broken off. Otherwise, that means you're gonna be replacing the wiper assembly. Pull that cable. Just grab the whole thing and just pull on it. There you go. That'll release the hood. Now it's anybody's guess or anybody's surprise as to what we're gonna find under this thing. 
push that button, lift them straight open. Here we go, spare tire area. Looks like we got us a speaker and a chainsaw. Okay. Now, <laughs> if the owner of this vehicle doesn't know there's a chainsaw in it, automatically assume it's part of the car. <laughs> and that's what happened here. We went and looked through the car, he didn't say nothing about the chainsaw, and the chainsaw ended up just going with it. We want to pull that spare tire out of there. Let's see what we've got under that spare tire, because we're once again looking for rust and we're looking for completeness. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. We'll pull that out and check the dates on it later, if that's a curiosity, how old the newspaper is. <laughs> yeah. That was exactly what I wanted. Yeah, pull that out the way. Throw all those bottles on the ground. A lot of brake fluid. As I said, the guy was messing with brakes on here before he did anything. And that's the smart thing to do if you're going to work on a car. Try to go through the brakes. Looks like we've already found money. There's a penny. Yeah, there's some in the spare tire. Yep, there's some spare tires. Spare tire money. Oh, there's another one. Pulling up some trunk liner here. We're looking for rust. What the hell? Ow. Da -da! Another spare tire. Here. Two spare tires. <laughs> Uh, I did not expect to find a second spare tire in there. I wonder if the rubber on these are any good, because I can actually use another spare right now for Ruby. Ah, uh, it looks <laughs> kind of dry rotted. It looks kind of dry rotted yeah. too? All right. Well, grab that tire and pull that out of there also. It smells like cologne. Yeah, it does. You might have just found a bottle of cologne in there spilled out somewhere. Kind of a heavy smell of cologne. Yeah. I wonder if that's from the car or if it's one of the neighbors. Anyway, what we got in there? More newspaper, more junk. Yeah. But how's it look for rust? Um, that looks like it's the original manual to the car right there. That's what that uh, is. It is. Yeah, that is. It's ruined. It's been sitting down here. It got wet, obviously. This yeah. whole area must have been wet at some point. What else do we see underneath all that? Just, just push it all out of the way. Rust. Looks like a whole lot of rust. But I don't see any rust holes. It looks like a little weep hole here was doing what it's supposed to do, which is let the water out. Okay, that's not too bad. Windshield washer bottle over here, still intact. The hose on it's gone, but it's still there. No rust under it. No rust in this area. How about up under here? There's our gas tank. That still looks pretty good too. Surface rust. Yeah, that's kind of a weird spot for water to sit up that high anyway. It tends to fall down, but I don't see any any rust considering. We found us a Husqvarna chainsaw. Go ahead and pull him out of there. That's actually a really good chainsaw. It looks like it's a little worse for wear, but if I can get it running, it might actually be worth something. <laughs> All right, looking up here at our fresh air system, and it looks like our hoses are all intact. Not necessarily hooked up properly, but intact. But I see two over here that really aren't hooked up to anything at all, but they are here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of hoses that are just kind of laying down. Fresh air box is up there along with the piece of insulation, which I have no idea why it's even there. It's not really connected properly, but it's still there. Looking over on this side, it looks like fresh air tube is there. And the wiring actually looks more organized for Volkswagen wiring, things considering. Um, usually Volkswagen wiring looks pretty bad. That's actually not too bad. What'd you find? Foil. Aluminum foil. Ah, not a bad find. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to go back in that passenger side door. All right. Passenger side door. Underneath the glove box. Okay. Right against the right side wall. There should be a little handle. Go up. Right under the glove box. Oh. There's a handle. Pull on that. Oh, gas flap. Here's our gas door. Looking around this area here, sometimes there's a rust on the inside right along this area and actually it doesn't look too bad, just collected some dirt. How's that smell to you? Pretty fresh, actually. Yeah, it smells like, like just us. gas that's been dried up. It doesn't smell like old shitty gas. That's actually a really good thing. As I said, this guy was uh, trying to do something with this car and uh, well, he might have put some fresh gas in it recently. So if there was any old cruddy gas in there, it's either so minimum that the new gas covered up the smell of it or it was just never in there to begin with. As the story goes, he got the car from his brother some time ago and it's just been sitting next to his house since forever. Again, all the rust is on the passenger side. It looks like the driver's side escaped most of the rust problems, being that that was on the side of the house for so many years. Okay, here's what everybody wants to see. Let's look at that engine.
All right, having a look inside the engine here, it looks like stuff is pretty complete. We obviously have the wrong distributor on here. This is a 009. And yes, I know a 009 distributor will run okay on the car. We'll get it running, but it's not the right distributor to have because what happens is the timing does not advance properly when you step on the gas pedal, which causes kind of a flat spot or a sputter. And I don't much like the way that feels. So this will be re replaced with a proper uh, SVDA, uh, single vacuum, dual advanced distributor, uh, sometime down the road. Not a big deal, but it's one of those things to be taken care of. Good news is the air cleaner is still intact and covered, but obviously it's not clasped closed. But I think that was a saving grace for this uh, engine being in some pretty good shape because if that carburetor is left open and the water comes through these vents, you can automatically assume that engine is just going to be crap. Now, when you're looking at one of these, you want to check the end play. Now, B here knows exactly what to do. Go ahead, grab that pulley and push it in and out. Now you probably notice that you can hear a little bit of a sound mm -hmm. and you could probably feel it in your hands. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But did you see the pulley move at all? No. No, because the amount of move was so minute that it looks like the end play on this is probably within spec or pretty close to it. Which means um, that's a good possibility we have a good engine here. Can you see if it turns over? Oh, we do have a loose engine. Look at that. Engine's free. Yeah, the engine does turn. It'll take a little bit of force. You kind of need a, a Glenny grip on there, you know, yeah. a good old duck man hand to wrap around. You have bigger hands. Yeah. But uh, it looks like it does turn over. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good sign. Complete revolution, yeah. Okay, this engine, um, this engine will probably start up. So we're going to make a separate video of that coming up in the near future. Um, first start after almost 30 years of sitting. Yeah, ran when parked, right? <laughs> it might actually be a might actually be a good engine. I guess we're gonna see. Okay, check that oil in there. Yeah, pull that dipstick. What you got in there? Dirty oil. It's dirty oil, but is it up to the line? I think you got it backwards, do you? Nope, I see the line. There it is. It looks like it's actually full of oil. Maybe even just a little bit high, but that's a good sign. That means yeah. the engine was probably taken care of, and uh, ran when parked might actually be a. A good answer as to what it was. Well, things in here look pretty good. It looks like our tins are pretty intact. Our rubber seal is gone, of course. It deteriorated after all those years. All the way around, the rubber seal's gone. I still see some of the rubber seal on the back side over there, or well, technically the front side, uh, in front of the engine. So that's uh, that's good, but we'll all need to be replaced. So this engine is probably gonna have to come out of here. Uh, the good news is, as I said, all the tins are in here, though. Everything seems to be plugged up as it's supposed to be. And these little metal pieces that are supposed to go around the heat risers on the intake manifold, there's not a single Volkswagen I've ever bought that actually had those. Never once have I even seen those in my life. I don't even know what they look like, but once again, they're not on this vehicle either. There's supposed to be a hose that goes into this hole that connects up to the air cleaner up here. And obviously that's missing, but once again, not a big deal. Those things are pretty easy to come by. I see the backup light fuse is still up here too. So this is all good signs that uh, everything in the rear end here looks like it's somewhat intact and somewhat complete. Now the wires to the uh, license plate light are in bad shape though, but <laughs> easy repair. Yeah. License plate bracket's still there, that's good news. The Volkswagen script there is a little, a little bit drunk. <laughs> well, Ryan. It got old, it sagged like some of my ex-girlfriends. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and start looking in the interior there. We need to figure out what happened to the floor and the tunnel. How's the floors look? They look like they're intact? Yeah. Or is that a tar board that I'm looking at? I don't see any rust, but... Okay, let me get a little closer in there, see what we got. Most Volkswagens have a tar board they put down. This is like sound dampening or the dynamat stuff that you see nowadays. This carpet wraps all the way around. You want to look along the edges for rust. Actually, you know what? This floor might actually be in good shape. There's a rust here in the uh, in the A-pillar that we discussed earlier. This can't come out without removing the uh, heater duct. I'm squeezing the heater channels along this way and they feel solid. That's good news. That's really good news. Okay, well, it looks like the floors might actually even be intact. I'd have to um, get up here and pull the screws out of that uh, uh, little kick plate up there for the passenger footrest or whatever the hell they call it. I hate those things. But uh, I'm going to have to pull it up to look underneath that for any more rust. Um, the seat, let's see if we can flip that forward. There's our hubcaps, by the way. Good news on that. And a book about tattoos. 
move a little. <laughs> Shake the seat forward and back while you're messing with that. There you go. This is the side where the battery lives. Oh, there's rust through the floor. Okay, that's what I'm expecting. Yep, back there. This is the side where the battery lives. So we need to look underneath the battery because what happens is the battery could leak acid and the acid doesn't actually eat the floor. It eats the paint. And any moisture that gets onto the exposed metal will of course rust it through. So to see a rust hole back here is not a surprise. It's pretty much standard on all Volkswagens. It looks like it's only the battery area back here that's rusted. Obviously, looking here, it looks like it's gonna need a quarter pan in the back side over here. You also wanna look along this area, right through here. There's the VIN number. Make sure the VIN number matches. Whatever title or paperwork they give to you, this is the VIN number that's gonna count. Don't worry about the VIN numbers on the rest of the body. Once again, that's the one that matters. Okay, obviously it has a back seat. The rest of it is up there. <laughs> So we're going to pull that seat down and we're going to look behind that as well. Okay, while we're tearing apart the inside, I thought we should look at the back window here because if this area shows any signs of rust, what happens is the body will let water into it. This back window actually looks like there might be no rust underneath it, which suggests to me that the whole rear package area down behind the back seat also has no rust. Okay, as predicted, it's looking pretty good back there. I don't see any rust. It looks like all this original coconut hair and just crap <laughs> is the original insulation from the back of this Volkswagen. The board that was in here though was a little wet. So there was some moisture getting in there from someplace, but it looks like it has not caused any rust damage to the back side of the car here. So these are all good signs. Okay, back behind the driver's seat here, we're gonna look for rust. And this actually looks like it's even worse than the passenger side was. That's pretty bad. Look at the old pop top in there from an old can of soda. Dang. So this car not having been driven in 30 years might actually be kind of true. <laughs> Those are the pop tops from back when I was born. <laughs> so this stuff is uh, very likely all original stuff we're looking at in here. Alright, let's look up in the front area. Let's see what kind of rust we got up here. All right, down below here in the front driver's side foot area, we're checking the floor for rust. And um, what do you see? I pulled up some of the tar board, which is sticking down pretty good, which is usually an indicator that the uh, floor is not rusty. Yeah, if it's hard to pull up, there's no rust underneath. That means it's sticking to paint. Yeah. Okay, so that all looks pretty good. I think that all looks pretty good then. There's a little divot sitting there on the ground. Pick that up there next to that. That is the brake push rod. So that story is pretty consistent with what the owner had said. He said he was starting to work on the brakes some time ago. And, uh, well, I guess that's as far as he got as pulling that out. It also looks like there's a wheel cylinder down there, too. That's that other piece. So I don't know what he was doing with the slave cylinder there. It looks like he pulled it out at some point. So these brakes are probably going to have to be gone through. I can almost guarantee you we're going to find more brake parts inside this car. Because it's starting to sound very, very consistent with what he had. Uh, owner did tell me he's got another brake master cylinder for me, so the next time I go back that way, uh, I'll just knock on his door and see if he's got it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, this uh, car looks like most of the rust is in the floor and in the back on both sides. Oddly enough, more on the driver's side than the passenger side, considering the driver's side is the one that has less rust in the body. It's more in the floor. Kind of, kind of interesting. You definitely want to get in and sit in the driver's seat, step on the gas pedal. Gas pedal is stiff as a board. It doesn't budge at all. Either the cable is frozen, something snapped, something's rusted, or the pedals are messed up. Brake pedal obviously doesn't do anything. <laughs> and then the clutch cable, that actually feels good. That feels good. This pedal assembly looks like it's in decent shape too. It's not all rusted out, so I'm probably not going to have to replace it. But something has caused the gas pedal to stick. So chances are the pedal assembly itself is uh, rusted up pretty badly. Give the e-brake a test. This one I've already tested and I've discovered that it works exactly like it's supposed to. That's great because <laughs> every time I buy a Beetle, the damn e-brake never works, but this one does. And then feel the shifter and see if it feels right. This one feels really sloppy, so it probably needs a shift rod bushing and I'll bet it needs a coupler in the back. Two of those things I would just automatically replace on a Beetle I would get anyway. 
there's reverse. It seems to find the gears okay anyway, but without being able to start it and run it, it's not gonna be able to go any further than that. Even the dome light is in place, how about that? This is the only Beetle I've ever gotten that had a dome light that was still in. Everyone that's ever had one, it was always on the floor somewhere. <laughs> Unbelievable. Get a look and see if the seatbelts are here and intact. They actually look like they are. They're a little stiff, but uh, yeah, they're trying to roll up. This might be serviceable. I might be able to repair that. Of course, check the one on the other side too, and look and see if your little rubber handles are there. This is what uh, allows the passengers to get in and out of the car easier. And of course, there's the rubber boot on the e-brake. Also needs to be replaced. It looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Here's a seat belt, and there's the other seat belt. Both in place. The rear also has a seat belt. Usually those are missing. I uh, know this one's actually there. I don't believe it. Both the uh, buckles are there. And then down here below, it's not attached properly, but uh, there it is. Seat belt's there. Fantastic. Again, the only Beetle I've ever had that actually had rear seat belts in it. Wow, quite a surprise. Have a look at the interior. Do the seats match? And it looks like the seats do match, but the top and bottoms don't. <laughs> this appeared to have a, uh, a white interior. At some point it was all white, and uh, somebody switched out some of the seats. The bottom in the back here is actually black, it's currently up, and the backing to the seat is white, whereas the bottoms here are white and the backings are black, so somebody mixed some stuff up. It's a shame I uh, had some other white and black seats before. I could have <laughs> probably made a good two sets of seats, but I don't have them around anymore. But look at the interior. Get up in here and make sure you've got the gauges installed. Make sure it doesn't look like anything's busted on it. Looks like the glass is intact, it's good and solid. It says about 23,000 miles, but don't expect that to be the actual mileage. It may have rolled over once, twice, or more. Look for the radio. That's not an original radio. Typically you'd find a sapphire radio inside of a Beetle. Look at all your dash controls knobs. Make sure everything is in here. Start pulling out some switches if you want. If there's a battery in the car and it's charged, some of this stuff won't work without the keys. But the stuff like the uh, four-way flasher should. The turn signal should be here. It is. There it is. Feels pretty good. Stock button is still up here on the horn. Fasten the safety belt light plastic is still in place. And the dash padding is looking pretty cracked, which is pretty typical on these things. I've never been fond of these dash pads, but the U.S. law mandated them. Up above, you got your mirror, you got your sun visors. I've never gotten a Beetle with good sun visors. <laughs> get a good look at the headliner, and this headliner is uh, obviously toast, so that's going to have to come out and get replaced. Check out the door panels, see if you got your handles, your knobs, window cranks, all that stuff. See how intact they are. Check your little vent window knobs. See if you can move them, and if your vent window will open. In this case, pretty sticky, don't force it. Also check to make sure that you have a lever here that works. Looks like it's also sticky. There should be a door handle. There should be a door pocket, only on the driver's side typically. There is one on the passenger side over there. Check your window crank. See if it will roll that window down. In this case, it works, but it stops at a certain point. Don't force it. You might break this or you might break the mechanism. Often, all they need is some lube. Sometime in the early 70s, Beatles started putting VIN numbers in a few different places. This was always a thing, putting it up front here. Looking at the VIN number here, it ends with 909. So if we come on up to the dashboard, it should also have a 909 on the VIN plate up here. Yep, there it is. 909. It's upside down, of course, to you guys, but it says 606, but it's a 909. And then the last place is a VIN number underneath the back seat. Way back here. And that one also ends with a 909. So we have VIN numbers matching. This is an original numbers matching car. We can check the number on the engine also, which is a... The engine code up here says AE, which I believe is also consistent with a 1972 Beetle. So this appears to be a numbers matching car. 
Now this is my favorite part of checking out a new Volkswagen that I haven't seen before, is getting up underneath it. I like to take a blanket with me wherever I go because the ground could be gravel, dirt, you know, just anything. I don't much like crawling around on that, especially since I might be in some nice clothes. But do bring a flashlight with you if you don't bring a blanket. In this case, I'm already home. We got a drop light. Let's see what we got under here. All right, first thing before we go too far, heater channel bottoms are rusted out. Not much of a su surprise. Very common problem. Pretty easy to fix if the sides of them aren't too bad. This one does have some issues on the side, and I will expect there's probably some problems on the top too. The floors, it looks like they're uh, bad. Right around the battery area, not much of a surprise again, that's pretty common on these things. Going forward, checking out up here, the front floor area actually looks really good. That's a surprise. I'm willing to bet that's good. And up around the, uh, what would be the Napoleon hat area also looks good on this side. Because typically right up here, that area will uh, rust out. The driver's side is usually more prone to rusting than the passenger side because sometimes that area will fill up with brake fluid. But uh, we'll have a look around the other side. The middle tunnel doesn't look too bad, at least from where I'm sitting anyway. Yeah, I don't see any problems with the tunnel. Obviously, beyond the grass way over there, you can see the floor pan on the other side is, looks, looks like hell. <laughs> We're going to go over there and have a look at that side. All right, on the driver's side, the rear end area here looks like it's even worse than it was on the passenger side. Definitely is going to need some help. This is all rusted out and gone. Bottom of the heater channel also looks like it's got holes. Up to the front here, it's actually missing pieces, so that's also going to need to be replaced. Can't tell you what the sides of it look like too well because this, uh, running board is still here but this side of the car actually hasn't been that rusty because this is the side that was kind of hiding behind the house where it was parked at for so many years all right going up front here see what we got a front floor actually looks pretty good yeah i'm not seeing any any rust up here no that actually looks good is that a hole yeah, there's a little bit of surface rust there, but uh, it's mostly just paint and junk chipping off. I don't think the floor pan is uh, rotted through. Nope, oh, nope, never mind, there's a hole here. That's going to need to be filled, patched, or maybe even the whole floor replaced. So there's definitely a hole up here. It's right next to the seat tracks, I would guess, from where I'm laying down here. Yeah, the seat tracks start right about here, so this isn't the seat track area. Let's see up front by the Napoleon's hat area. That's the area that always rusts on these things due to the brake fluid from the massive cylinder draining into it when they leak. And no, that one's in good shape. That little area down through here is all solid. That is fantastic. That's, uh, that's actually really good news. Okay. And down there you see the brake wire that connects to the master cylinder to make your brake lights work. That's dangling because this uh, previous owner of this car has taken the master cylinder out, or at least that's what he told me anyway. He was uh, preparing to get this thing driving, and he was starting with the brakes, so that's pretty good evidence that uh, he was honest. All right. Okay, so in summary, yeah, the car is in some pretty rough shape, but it is very repairable. Everything that appears to be rusted is just the stuff on the bottom sections, which is pretty normal on these things. If you're gonna find an old Beetle that's been sitting for a while, you're usually gonna find a hole around the battery area, probably on the passenger, uh, probably over in the driver's side area, opposite of the passenger side where the battery's at is also gonna be rusted. They're gonna need little heater channel repairs. But overall, this car, in some ways, is better than some of the other ones. Um, it just looks like it's just more complete. Everything's there, all the VIN numbers are on it. The numbers match the title, the title is clear, and the engine turns over and it's got little end play. So this one would be a good candidate to buy and probably restore. Depending upon your ability or your budget, you may decide one way or the other, but again, that affects your final price. Now, what I would offer on this, I'm not gonna tell you because it might be different in your market. You also might have a different budget than I do. But this car, I wouldn't go and rip the guy off. I would give him what I think it's worth. And if you're not sure what it's worth, take a look up on the Samba 
and check out other cars that are like this one and then cut the price in half because everything that they put up there is way overinflated. <laughs> so I think that should answer you guys as to what you want to do on that one. But uh, we're going to try to put this thing back together and in the next video we're actually going to just gut the car and see what we find in it. There might be some presents. Maybe we'll find something. Some used condoms, a cell phone, pack of money. I mean, you know, it could be anything. Dead hookers. It could be dead hookers. They have to be chopped to bits though. True. That would be messy. Yeah. <laughs> but 30 years old dead hookers? Ew. Yeah, it'd be mummy pieces. It'd be like stuff you'd find hooker in jerky. Yeah, hooker jerky. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, thanks you guys for watching. Check out B's stuff. You can find it up on darkshit.net. You can also find all my other YouTube channels up there just the same. Our Patreons, our Instagrams. You can even find me up on Facebook if you're so interested. If you want to send me a message, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Get in there, get a little, little cute, a little trashy, you know. <laughs> you know cute, whatever it is trashy. that brings people into the channel, it's been working all along. <sighs> I might work. <clears throat> I got a burp and it's making it hard to breathe. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, I'm okay. It's just, <laughs> I gotta make the burp, it won't come out. It's, it's starting to hurt. <laughs> you change your poses and stuff, and then, you know, you get down on your knees and make like you're gonna take it or something, you know. Wait, up. Oh, well, that might work. We're gonna back up a little more for that. And this is? B. McQueen. And how did I want to? Okay. How do you want to? I do, well, um. Not. <laughs> On all four, please. <laughs> there it is. All right, um. What, what you thinking about? Volkswagen stuff. Okay, okay.